Hello and welcome to Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics. This is Cyrus and tonight we're talking about the strangest afterlife misconception that still persists. And uh, basically we're looking at a post from the Facebook group Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics by Lale Quinn concerning, well, this one idea that kind of comes kind of resurrects itself like a zombie again and again and unfortunately is often carried on the shoulders of influential people who I think should know better as we attempt to create some kind of a consensus about what is uh, legitimate information about an afterlife and I understand that it's difficult to nail down solid information about a topic that can be so subjective and so dependent on personal experiences. But I think some things that we can reject based upon um, sort of how it doesn't appeal to our reason, doesn't appeal to logic, and doesn't uh, correspond with a vast majority of experiences. And I also think that this issue highlights that the danger in particular with, with mediums who may be having their best best intentions in mind, but are misreporting information based upon a very narrow window of, of, of knowledge. For instance, a random person on the other side whom they are communicating with telepathically and receiving input from, which I cannot think of a more unreliable channel of communication. And then attempting to paint sort of broad ideas about the entirety of the multiverse dependent upon one channel of communication. And so I've seen this create issues again and again. In particular because those ideas, you know, especially if it's someone who's influential, an influential medium, an influential YouTuber, somebody gets that idea, spreads it out like it's gospel because they want to keep kind of a guru status. They don't, not, they don't want to speak in terms of theories and hypotheses. They want to speak in absolutes. So they speak out something that may not be accurate in absolute terms. The idea percolates down into uh, communities and people trying to find answers about uh, the other side, the great beyond. And it creates a lot of grief and a lot of uh, sadness. So that's why I try to keep tabs with these things. And so uh, this is a post which I will uh, now read and we'll begin exploring this issue that popped up on the forum. It's a big crazy thread with a lot of content by also some all, some all stars making uh, contributions to this thread. People like Jurgen Ziva, Ian Rubenstein, they're all on here, so it's kind of like an all-star thread, which is cool. I'm, I won't be able to go into the entire thread, but uh, I will try to address some of the important points. But before we get started, you are watching Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics, where we are one of the only places, I think, on the web or anywhere that discusses the issue of where we go when we die on literal terms. And if you want to get involved or um, support the channel, just hit the subscribe button, like the video. That helps a lot. If you want to work with me personally, like do some coaching consultations with me, uh, you can get involved with Patreon, patreon.com forward slash afterlife topics or my PayPal. It's just down there. Just Cyrus at CyrusKirkpatrick.com. It's in the box down there in the description as well. Okay, so well, let's continue. So Lala asks, a question for you, Cyrus Kirkpatrick. I watched a post from Suzanne Giesman, who I consider to be one of the top mediums. And through first-hand knowledge, I trust implicitly to be legitimate, and she is a very credible medium. But I am now sad and confused by her answer to a question. In this post, a questioner asks whether spirits can still feel the warm breeze. And her answer was no. And that touch is one of the things spirits miss the most. They are sad that they can no longer feel an embrace, etc. But she said they can remember what it was like and kind of feel, kind of feel it again through their memory. Aside from how sad this is, does it make any sense? If all of our senses are gone on the other side, now that is logically no different from being deaf and blind and living in a world of nothingness. If only one sense has gone touch, that seems ludicrous. Are there any ideas on why someone of her caliber could believe this? 
in retrospect, I still don't think that there is an answer, even with the 185 comments on the thread about why someone of her caliber would believe this. I've offered some theories. So one of my uh, first posts on the thread was that at some point we have to consider someone like Suzanne, who's very talented, maybe just isn't like isn't a bad medium, but is getting information from a bad source. So she, as a channel, is picking up the thoughts, the, the, the telepathic connection with a random soul. So where is that random soul in the afterlife? What is that random soul's condition? Is that random soul coming from a place where it it um, is not able to feel touch, where it misses those basic functions? Maybe that random soul is not on the, quote, astral plane. Sometimes people say, oh, we need to transcend and avoid the astral plane. Well, I think that comes with some inherent issues. Um, avoiding the astral plane may mean going into a purely energy-based environment. You won't be blind and deaf, but you won't have access possibly to touch and the things that we enjoy here because you opted out of having an astral body. Again, we're looking at a, the cosmic laws of consent and free will. If you don't want something, you're not going to get it. If you ask for something, you'll probably receive it in some way or another. So if someone has like a religious belief, for example, or let's say an idea, yeah, religious conception that when you die, you have to merge with God. And upon that merging process that we can cast aside all the business of the flesh and we are no longer a part of material reality. And so this is very much a dualist perspective, but it also crosses paths with certain kind of puritanical Christian beliefs, even though dualism and Christianity were not supposed to mix with each other. It did create this interesting dichotomy. I talk about this uh, several videos back in more detail. So if someone is you know, coming from a position of strong belief that, the, that matter is bad, physical sensation is bad, what ends up happening? They end up in an afterlife state devoid of all those things without an astral body without an therefore with no astral body no ability to go into an astral plane of existence and no ability to experience touch and sensation and all the things that i do when i go out of my body right so if you have a medium and i think there's many souls like the one i described on the other side who are like let's avoid the astral plane and go to god and then they basically end up just floating around and missing the experiences they used to have. If one of those souls comes through a medium, that's not the end all be all of the afterlife. Um, I continue this by saying, you know, by the way, wouldn't th this belief by Suzanne Guzman mean that death is a downgrade from the astral projection state where you can do all these things? This obviously would be extremely bizarre. And I tagged Jürgen Ziva, as you know, the, the, the greatest out-of-body explorer possibly of all time, Jürgen Ziva. I mean to say in our generation, maybe not all time, but um, but of course he contributes on the group. And so I was great. I was really happy to bring Jürgen into this because I knew he was going to have some cool stuff to say about this as well. Next came a post that I think illustrates what I just said, that these kind of non-astral energy environments exist where it's not like enlightened energy environment where you, you know your consciousness is expanded to the nth level and you're you know, you're now a you know a seventh density, eleventh dimensional being. I mean that there's these kind of plain, humdrum, pure energy-based environments, which frankly I think I think most reasonable people may want to avoid going into as their permanent place of residence on the other side. We could even say that this is part of how people get trapped or suckered into reincarnation. So a lot of you guys out there believe like you know the uh, the the spirit matrix, blah blah blah. Um, the, you know there, there's a moon trap forcing us to reincarnate, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, whether it can be some truth behind that is if you end up in these types of environments, not only will you maybe feel like you have no choice but to reincarnate, it could be some entity manipulating you and telling you, oh, you miss eating ice cream and hugging your loved ones. Well, time to reincarnate. And then they send you back to follow some 
contract that they cook up for you to follow. So I definitely see how the, the manipulation-based reincarnation issue could be real. So anyway, let's look at a post by April Smith that um, validates that. She says, when I passed away in 2016 on the operating table, so she had a near-death experience, I went to a very bright light and surrounded me, but I was so sad because there was no one around. All I had was my eyes and my knowledge that I had no physical being. I was totally sad and scared because there was no emotion there, if that makes any sense. So emotionless, formless, floating around. Um, and she didn't like this very much. I responded, I think this is part of the problem of not entering an astral plane and being just floating around. You may end up in a situation that is not as optimal as you may think it is. Um, I mentioned to her um, that she should focus and intend to not return to a place like this, but to enter a normal, higher dimensional existence. And she says, this is what I've been working on for the last four years with great success sometimes, but I noticed a very peaceful, calming realm coming around me. I do think of my parents quite a bit. For, I do thank my parents quite a bit for their guidance and thank you for your words. Um... So I think uh, the main point that she was getting at, though, is that she didn't like that pure energy realm, and now she is working on kind of establishing a connection with what I would say is kind of like the real afterlife. Because if you're in a state like this, I mean, it's a it's a non-state. There's nothing you can do in this kind of white void except wait around and end up getting reincarnated. This doesn't mean I think the light is a trap that's out to get you. I don't think so. I think there really is a spiritual divine light. But I do think it's also possible that we could enter into these kind of, you know, these almost purgatory type states that, that have the appearance of white light. And I do think it's possible to get manipulated from, from a state like that. Because if what Suzanne Giesman was saying is true, that she's getting this information from spirits, that there are spirits stuck in this kind of stasis. And it's no way to live being uh, unable to enjoy even the most rudimentary elements of, of, of this of this life, right? And so, again, this is why um, your intention is what matters, right? So when, you, when it's time for you to die, if you want to make sure that you are with your loved ones and you're, you're in a, quote, heavenly environment, then set that intention. Tell the universe and tell yourself what it is that you want. Don't get suckered into ending up in, in a state of existence that, doesn't fit you so there's a lot more in this thread to go over um excuse me Ugh. but i don't have time to do all of it so what i'm going to do is just try to skip ahead to when jurgen was stepping into this because obviously jurgen has a lot of great things to say oh well, if we have a we have a post by marcus lang this is not consistent with my own contacts on that side who tell me differently I trust my friends there and my own NDE more than I trust anyone else for that kind of information. One of the best mediums I know, Marcus, re re repudiating this idea. And let's keep scrolling and find what Jurgen has to say. Um, there is a difference between communicating with higher or finer dimensional energies and actually being there in person in full waking consciousness, taking in firsthand knowledge and experiences as we do when we ask to travel. We not only talk to our people there and find out what goes on, but even embrace them and hug them. Everything we can experience here, we can experience over there without exception and much, much more. So people ask why we are here at all. My own answer is resistance. No other vibrational state allows the challenge of physical resistance in the way material earth does, which harnesses challenges and enables powers and allows us to develop skills that no other vibrational state does like earth does. And that is why physical earth is so popular. I agree basically with everything you just said. Um, it says... Jürgen continues, the way forward with spiritual investigation is to consider the aspect of consensus not giving individual experience priority to the exclusion of others and thereby invalidating important observations. We are at the frontier of our research and consciousness. Jürgen continues, I recently was told that when you die, everything is light and love, all eyes, no body, and that I am simply... 
is simply mistaken. So somebody was regurgitating this light and love stasis chamber afterlife to Jürgen. Jürgen says he responds, yes, there can be such a state and I have experienced such a state myself. It's possible to enter that type of realm through the out of body um, practice. But it is like an alien landing in the desert and reporting back to the mothership, the earth is nothing but sand. Um, so this is a big post. I don't think I have to. <laughs> I think my mouth is getting dry. I can't read all that. Mm. So Jürgen continues with an anecdote concerning Suzanne Giesman, but he also says... Um, Basically that some people get um, put off by his own descriptions of being on the other side on the astral plane in full physical detail. Because some people are really attached to this idea again of dualism. That the, a heavenly environment involves merging with God as a non-solid you know, energy pattern. And that it's it's icky to, to have solid experiences, to touch things, drink things, eat things. And the idea of when he reports those things as happening on the astral plane, even some very well-respected people and mediums sometimes um, uh, uh, challenge him on those ideas. Uh, all right, so to continue, um, Jürgen says... We also need to consider the difference in perception between mediums and astral travelers. Mediums are mostly concerned with making contact with departed people. An astral traveler actually goes there and the tiny details stand out and become incredibly obvious and important. So there's one more post Jürgen made. I don't want to miss out on it, but I think I have to turn my internet back on for it to pull up, which means I'm going to get attacked by Facebook notifications and people bothering me so just uh, bear with me but Jurgen made a great uh, a, a great additional post I don't I don't want to I don't want uh, I don't want it to uh, go by the wayside here okay I'm gonna try to sneak off Plonk. okay so Jurgen says uh, Recently, when asked, what is it like to be dead? What is the astral world like? I said, open your front door and go outside. That's what it is like. A good way to get an understanding of how real and, quote, physical it feels. Jürgen continues. We may have to surrender the old idea that the afterlife is in some way vaporous or flimsy, less real than this earth or even dreamy. If anything is more real, or as I said previously, there isn't even an afterlife, only a continuum of life in a different state of vibration or frequency, which I think is a great way to put it. Um, so we're looking at the entire spectrum of the multiverse. If Suzanne Giesman said this like this, look, I have a lot of respect for Suzanne Giesman, but I got to call her out on this at this point. Um, it's very hurtful to spread ideas like that to people, which is not based on any kind of broader spectrum of what the afterlife is about. And it's very sad and very somber what Suzanne described. Uh, let me just continue. There's, there's one more post here I, I, I wanted to bring up because obviously I don't know how legitimate it is, but somebody kind of channeled their own guide, somebody who was a medium, and gave a very pithy response about this. Uh, where are we? Again, there's like 180 responses on this thread, so it's not... Okay, from my guide, Thanus who has been in the afterlife for 12,000 years. This is somebody named Shirley Ryan. Uh, so now, now the guide Thanus is responding. My dear Lolly, while there is much that one misses from the physical world, like how you experience touch and other pleasures from a physical world's tactile type of sensation, those types of pleasures are also not gone, but now experienced at a different and higher frequency that one could say is simply different. And it's not better or worse. The medium is making references to the lower realms of the astral, not the midline or higher realms where everything is experienced on a much deeper level, more extremes, colors, more intense feelings, more satisfying, and the energy is more gratifying. This is a really interesting answer because it's something I've heard from spirit as well, which is those tactile senses that we talk about. They don't go away, but this is also even what Jürgen has talked about, what I've experienced to a lesser extent. But they're enhanced, right? And 
in, in this way that it's enhanced, in some ways it becomes different. And what a spirit misses tends to be it's kind of the nostalgia from the life they had, not necessarily that they miss the way that you touch, smell, and taste things uh, here compared to there. It's just the, the, the almost the nostalgic effect. And I expect dogs are going to be freaking out in a second. So just bear with the noise. I don't edit these little podcast episodes so for the sake of productivity. So um, if the dogs start flipping out, you got to go with it. Okay. But as I was saying, so they miss the nostalgic elements, not necessarily the um, the you know, being able to do it. But even that said, I don't necessarily buy even what this guide is saying completely because it's a little bit of a contradiction. So the, the guide is saying that there is much that one misses from the physical world, like how you experience touch and other pleasures. Um, uh, those, but those pleasures are not gone, just experienced at different frequency. So why would people necessarily miss it that much? Um, I've had experiences in the outer body state, in the astral projection state, which are, it, it's not possible to actually um, figure out which state is which, where a physical sensation feels the same there, sometimes strong enough that it actually wakes me up out of the astral projection state. Now, I don't doubt that there may be some differences. I think that there is a difference in just the impact that the astral state has from physical experience. If you eat something in this world, I mean, you feel it going all the way through your body. And on the astral state, it's a less restricted world with a more airy body that isn't so dependent on physical function, at least not as much as here. And so you might not get like the same, quite the same experience. But the idea that you don't have the experience anymore, I, I don't think anything could be further from the truth. And I think there's only only ways to experience things on grander and greater levels, as Jurgen basically says, and other people who are informed about the subject. So that's it. It's a big, crazy thread, a lot to go over. Tell me what you think in those comments down below about this. And um, I guess that's it. And so next time you see me on this video, I will be uh, not in the same background anymore. I'm going back home to Arizona for a while. And then I'm going to also do uh, some time in Mexico afterwards, specifically for healing. I'm still, you know, I'm still basically sick with, you know, you know what, the same long haul condition. I'm pretty sure it's basically a dysfunction of my nervous system that leaves you perpetually feeling kind of fatigued, kind of sick, and all these other weird manifestations, uh, very COVID-y manifestations that, that have uh, taken root in my body. But I am getting better slowly. Um, heck, I can do this video and I'm not out of breath. If you remember like uh, a couple months ago, I, you'd see me doing a video and be like, <sighs> but it's like a, lot, a lot of that is kind of cleared up. So obviously I am getting better, but I have to, I have to really make a commitment to it and really take some kind of like um, massive action. And I'll tell you one thing, when I'm on the astral level, I'm not going to miss dealing with crap like this in this body. I don't know how much there is to miss about this world when you're on that side. I'm going to call BS. Anyway, if you want to learn more about the afterlife, check out books of mine like Understanding Life After Death or the Afterlife and Beyond over at afterlifetopics.com. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you, um, I'll see you in Arizona.